Hey, peace, family. Jesus Christ bless you. So, hug the cactus. This is um, kind of an imagery that I've had the last year or so that I've been telling a few people about. Um, I feel like the Lord put this on my spirit, this imagery of hugging a cactus. And what it's basically talking about is how we deal with suffering. Uh, people in the world, if they're suffering and if you touch a cactus, what's your response? You touch it, you jerk your hand away. And the, the sense I've gotten with this hugging the cactus is to be different than the world, not to jerk the hand away, but to embrace the cactus, hug the cactus. And then like the next step would be that the Lord is, is trying to teach me is to smile. So when you hug the cactus, smile, find joy in it. Uh, the Apostle Paul writes, I have learned to uh, rejoice in all things. And uh, another place in scripture, count it all joy when you suffer these various things uh, for the namesake of Jesus. So it's a command. It's, it's something that's possible. You can find joy in suffering. And the reason I feel moved to speak about this briefly here today, this morning, is because here in 2023, I believe uh, it's going to be more pain and suffering, unfortunately. But, you know, as somebody who is a believer on Jesus, and this is obviously available to everybody, to anybody, if you uh, trust on Jesus, if you call on him, um, confess and forsake and turn away, repent of your sins, um, ask the Lord to forgive you, he shall, and you will be transformed, you will be changed, and you can persevere through anything. You know, it's... Uh, <clears throat> It's a peculiar thing. The Lord put it on my heart recently to order this book that I have here actually called Fox's Book of Martyrs by this guy, John Fox. It talks about Christian persecution and suffering since Jesus' disciples. It goes through a history of how these people who have trusted on Jesus willingly and sometimes joyfully suffered. Very terrible ways of death. So it is possible there is power um, in the suffering the, um, the thing I exhort you guys to is to embrace suffering. It's what the Lord has for you. Doesn't mean it's forever. It might be for a short season. It might be for a medium term season. It might be for longer. Yeah, it stinks. Yeah, it's difficult, but it's purposeful. Uh, there's a scripture that says, All things work for good for those who love the Lord. So if you love Jesus, if you're transformed, if you are a child of God, even that difficult thing you're going through, there's going to be some good from it. It's going to bring forth some fruit. Now, if you haven't chosen on Jesus, this is not going to apply. You can't make the claim that that thing you're going through, that suffering is for your good. Not necessarily. You know, it, it, there's a lot of graces put on people who deny and hate the Lord. You know, a sunny day, beautiful weather, freedom in your country, health, uh, a spouse, children. These are all blessings. But for someone who is a God hater, um, you know, this is a uh, this is this is gracious of the Lord to do such a thing. But just to to stay on task, basically what I'm also saying is uh, with this imagery of hugging the cactus, I think of two uh, ways Jesus Christ did this himself. Um, for example, when he was in the garden before they killed him, when his accusers came and he did nothing wrong but come to save this whole world, they came to get him in the dead of night. A bunch of men who had authority to, to arrest him and kill him. Although this was this was part of the plan for salvation, but they come for him, and what would most men do today? They would run away, they would stay seated, you have to drag them, they'd be like, you have to drag me up. Uh, they would fight against a, a person, especially if they thought they were justified and didn't do anything wrong. But Jesus Christ said, come, look, my accusers are here, rise up, let us go. He met it. So just consider that, you know? Uh, that's just a, another way of pain, dealing with pain and suffering. Meet it like a man or if you're a woman, like a strong woman. It's what the Lord has for you. Uh, don't shy away from these things. Face them. The Lord will give you the strength. Number one. Uh, number two, when Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, <clears throat> there was that mixture of gall and wine. And I did a little research on that. When they mix the gall with wine, it can be like a numbing effect. So basically, they are probably having some maybe compassion on seeing how Jesus was suffering. They're like, hey man, give him this stuff so 
he's suffering and they beat him up so bad and it, they, maybe they had some compassion or whatever. Uh, Jesus, when he tasted it, he tasted what it was. He refused it. So again, another example of how he, he's like, I'm facing this pain. I was made for this moment. This is my moment. I'm not going to be intoxicated during it, even if it would help me. No, 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 no. That cactus, Jesus bear hugged it. He's like, this is this is what I've ordained to do. Far be it from me to be not present. He was present, full mind, full faculties. He, he that is so amazing. What a man, you know, like he is God, but with flesh clothed on him as Jesus Christ. Like, what a perfect example. Me as a man, when I see that, I'm like, oh, let me strive to be just like that. Let me bear hug every single cactus that comes and live more like Jesus Christ. Um, that's number two. And also I think of from uh, John eleven sixteen, 16, Thomas, also known as Didymus. They were going back to um, Jesus was going to resurrect um, Lazarus, who had died. And they're going back to Judea. They had just come from there. And they're trying to kill Jesus there. Many times people trying to kill Jesus. And his disciples were saying as much. He's like, oh, you know, we just left there. You want to go back? And Thomas called Didymus and said, well, let us go and let us, like, die with him. Like, I don't know if he's being sarcastic or what. I've heard different things on it. But if the spirit of it is like, he's like, all right, we'll go, Lord. If you want to go, we'll go. We'll probably get killed and die because they're trying to kill you and we're with you, but we'll go. So I don't know. Uh, that's a speculation, I guess, on my behalf. But if that spirit is correct, like what a beautiful thing saying, hey, you know what? If this is what the Lord has for us, if this is where Jesus is leading you into something that you think is going to be painful or dangerous or deadly, he's like, I'm in. All chips on Jesus. Um, and there's also a part, I think, in Acts of the Apostles where... Paul was like on the beach or something and he was going off to another leg of his journey and his friends were saying, don't go, don't go, they're going to kill you. They knew it. And Paul said, oh, you guys are breaking my heart, he said. He said, uh, he said, stop. He's like, don't you know I am willing to go if I get imprisoned even unto death. Wow. If you're a man on a mission or a person on a mission and the Lord is calling you to something, even death, you're just like... With a bat, you're like, bring it on. What's the pitch? Oh, it's going to be a curveball. It's going to be a fastball. You're just like, when you're a man on a mission and you know this is what the Lord has for you and your spirit senses it, you're like, this is what I was created to do. And in every moment, this thing, that thing, a small step, a huge thing, nothing can stop you, not even the prospect of death. And I'll just close this short video also, you know, in an example from my life of where, you know, hugging the cactus, I'm trying to do that more and more in little things all day hitting the gym early in the morning that can be a painful difficult things to do thing to do but i do it most mornings before i go to work and it's good it's a little microcosm of being a christian being a believer hugging the cactus doing things which are difficult because in them you can find such blessings such treasures such it strengthens you it builds your character it builds a lot of things it makes you i like the term if you stay ready you don't need to get ready if you're just always ready when the curveballs come you're like all right this stinks. I don't like this. I hate this. But you're just like, you roll with it. It's so fantastic. And an example from my life, in my life before Jesus, about eight years ago, um, I was married. I was not saved. And um, we separated and then we divorced. And at my divorce, the little proceeding thing, um, I sat down there and the judge said I had like a right to half of the marital um, you know, finances and stuff. And the Lord had kind of, I was just starting to know Jesus and stuff. And it was so interesting and fascinating. And I felt like Jesus was going to provide everything for me. And I felt beforehand that the Lord was saying, don't take anything financially. Like, put your chips on me. Don't take anything from Babylon, from the old world. Like, do you believe on me, Kevin? Do you trust me? Okay, show me. And I was like, I was seeing the Lord work already at that point. So I'm like, oh, he's going to do it. No problem. So I went there and when the judge said, you know, I have right to half marital assets. I said no, and she like repeated herself, and I was like, yeah, no thank you, no thank you. And then, so I took nothing. I took a couple thousand dollars of debt into my new life in Christ. And I tell you what, <clears throat> I'll wrap it up here. I've, I've never been wanting. I've never been lacking. I've never been laid on a bill. I've never been homeless. I've never, I've been provided for, guys. So 
believe that you know these these are the moments in life where you're like okay i believe in jesus but i can't do that no you can do that you must do that these are things i think the lord tees up for us specifically and purposefully they are purposeful they will um the lord will be there with you if you trust on jesus and that's the whole point with all of this if anyone's watching this who hasn't trusted on jesus that's an important thing to do we've all sinned uh, there's a wage to sin uh, god's word says and the wages of sin is death all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god you can't get to eternity without the lord and some of you may be like yeah i've heard that it's stupid i don't do religion it's not religion religion says do Jesus said, done. Uh, trust on the Lord today. Confess your sins. Ask him to save you. Pick up a scripture. Start reading New Testament. You can start at Matthew and read to Revelation. You'll be changed. You'll be uh, transformed. And you're going to be just uh, really happy that you did do that. So I love you guys. Hug the cactus when a cactus comes before you. Don't run from it. Don't be like the world. Don't be weak. You'll be fine. Hug the cactus. We're seeing a lot of calamity. We're going to see more. Guaranteed in 2023. Don't be afraid. Have no fear. Uh, fear. There's a spirit behind fear. So don't play with these evil spirits. Don't embrace them. Don't let them hook you like a dog on a leash and bring you all around. No. Trust on Jesus. Receive his Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is gentle and will guide you properly. You'll hear a voice behind you telling you which way to go. Not to the right or left, but it'll tell you the right way. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Jesus Christ bless you. Have a blessed day.